if we just travel a few hundred kilometers from a township say pune you go to bhor you go to satara and you listen to the women talking you feel like that you, they're talking from a time which is far beyond than this but these two kind of times exist together yeah and that's absolutely. the beauty of india i guess we decided that we will go through a cinematographic style which will be mainly dependent on the idea of evoking more by showing less one person you could meet for what that day no rebel ke jala okay Yudhijit and Prithvi, first of all, many congratulations for having your film in Cannes, selected from over 2,000 entries sent by film schools all over the world. Um, how incredible! Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I know you're going to come in today, but what's it been like so far? Are you pinching yourselves? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, I can share a very small anecdote that when on 8th of March, uh, I received uh, an email from. the artistic director of can i was rewatching one of my favorite films uh, once upon a time in anatolia which actually my co-writer prithvi he introduced the film to me of uh, by nuri bilge jalan and and jalan has a movie here yeah, uh-huh. yeah, actually <laughs> fantastic and uh, so i was when i was rewatching that film that email came so it's very very you know significant for me for many reasons and I'm, i think both of us are very happy how wonderful absolutely um you know your film and i'm going to attempt to pronounce this correctly please correct me nemich 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 um which you told me means forever in mm-hmm. marathi but also has several interpretations It roughly translates to forever sure you know what i found fascinating about the movie was that obviously it's set in a specific time it is during the pandemic uh and yet it has this sense and texture of timelessness like this has happened for millennia it will continue to happen uh tell me about this story where did it come from how did you guys create this movie well uh when i was doing my uh documentary last year kal subah after that i was roaming around a lot not with the agenda of finding a film but uh, because i love photography so i keep roaming about taking pictures and there i encountered uh, you know uh, various village women their stories and about menstruation being a taboo which is still prevalent not only in the villages even in town and then i chanced upon a i think a, an article in a newspaper i don't exactly remember the name of it but it uh, was something to do with the death of a woman in a period house in a village called garchiroli from there i began my research because it intrigued me not with the idea of making a film but i i got to know that uh, women in maharashtra especially and in nepal they are isolated in dingy huts during their menstruation period and uh, during that time they are not supposed to even cross the shadow of a man that's the you know the saying goes later when i probed a little farther by talking to various ngos anthropologists professors and of course villages rural women i got to know that there's a code language uh, which is used by the women to refer to period because period being a taboo word they don't refer to it as period uh, they say um, kaurana shula which in english means i'm touched by a crow so this quite intrigued me this phrase so that was the starting point of it and then i also went around uh, certain windmill farms mostly for the photographic purpose and there i got to know about a term called bird shattering which means when a windmill is uh, formed in a place often the birds especially the crows being the regular ones they go through the blades so the blades stop working and the crows die so in my head there was a kind of an oblique association of you know being hit by a crow the blade stop working and when the women are struck by a crow their life for the their time being stop. gets stopped yeah and uh, also i felt that this two associations can go very well with the background of pandemic because what we all experienced during pandemic that we were isolated of us who were covid infected we were untouchables while we were you know bearing the covid virus what we went through uh, as a human race in a remarkable period of time these women go through i mean every fortnight or every month when they're having periods so i was very intrigued what happened to this period houses during the corona time i didn't get very clear answers because uh, in villages people don't you know they were not so afraid of the covid like we were especially the women weren't so i thought of 
you know, telling a story, mainly a love story of a girl trying to find or trying to elope with her lover during the pandemic while she is isolated in a hut. So that's the kind of story. And then this was very thread line. And then he, when I jammed with him, he introduced certain more layers to it, like making the girl uh, a part of a nomadic tribe. So I think he can. Yes, I mean, uh, you know, if we mostly travel, uh, we usually do that, you know, while making any of our stories. Uh, we we got to hear a lot of anecdotes uh, about the you know, tribal tradition and also the village tradition. And through it, uh, we thought that, you know, as he mentioned that uh, uh, women are, you know, almost treated like untouchables. And we were, you know, uh, like that during our COVID. So we thought to bring in some layers of, uh, you know, uh, the Banjara women, uh, you know, what their thought process is, not only to a particular clan, but overall, you know, uh, some superstition, yet oh. tribal myths into the story to give that layer into it. So that uh, there is a sense of ambiguity, you know what what uh, the 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 girl or the you know, Sakshi. The, we don't we have not we named, uh, named the right. character, but it's but in yeah, our it's mind. In mind. That's the story you know unfurled. Uh, so that's that's how we went about it. You know, and also, as you mentioned, timelessness. I think you know uh, if we pinpoint a particular tradition of a particular tribe, then it becomes more uh, ethnographic in nature. And since I had made a film. Kalsubai, which is about a uh, tribe, we both were not very keen to make it very particular about a particular tribe of India, but we were more keen in to evoke, you know, how a nomadic tribe would look at time itself as life itself and how they would look at it, which is very different from ours. And this kind of belief system, I think, exists parallelly even today. I mean, it's not that it's bygone. If we just travel a few hundred kilometers from a township, Say Pune, you go to Bhor, you go to Satara, and you listen to the women talking. You feel like that they are talking from a time which is far beyond than this. But these two kind of times exist together. Yeah, and that's absolutely. the beauty of India, I guess. So that yeah. was another part. But you know what's interesting to me is like the the choices that you made in terms of um, how close <coughs> you went mm -hmm. to your actors. You know, the such tight close-ups of the women, but the men were either just out of frame or uh, under masks. Um, tell me about that. Well, it's a nice uh, observation. I didn't think it that way. Mm. But yeah, as you say, it is like that in the film. Uh, I had one thing uh, in mind that in my previous film, there's a lot of white shots, you know, and uh, I thought in this film, uh, we need to be closer to the character. Mm. And in order to evoke how she's feeling, because it's told from the point of view of the girl who tries to elope. So we decided that we will go through a cinematographic style which will be mainly dependent on the idea of evoking more by showing less. So we decided on close-ups mostly and because we chose 1.66 as an aspect ratio because it's neither classical, it's European standard but uh, in the mainstream sense it's neither classical nor it's like a cinemascope. It's a very weird ratio, you know, and I like it a lot for human, what to say, to compose human beings. Yeah. And uh, that kind of, I think, uh, went best in my opinion with the film. And we, with, the, with regard to the lenses, uh, we did a test shoot of the characters. I had in mind, along with my cinematographer, Rachit, of using maybe wider lenses of 24, maybe wider than that. but. After doing a test shot of the characters, of the actors, mm, we decided to go for mostly 32 normalish because that is what was going best. So yeah, we had in mind of using close-ups, not showing white spaces. Even we had, you know, I had photographed beautiful places of white shots of windmills, but in the film there are hardly two shots of the windmill and very generic in, in general. It's a very generic shot which we kind of tried to take in the edit because I thought the sound will be doing it, giving it a layer. So we wanted the image of the windmill to be very generic because the sound was a little weird. Also, when we, we are, you know, shooting landscape, which, you know, it was shot, we have this habit of, you know, showing... Showing a lot, uh, yeah. yeah, a, a wide shot. So, yes, I mean, we, as he said, it was, uh, you know, we thought of getting more close 
to the characters character. and also i mean regarding the uh, that particular shot of the god talking in the walkie talkie that was improvisation i mean we had five six shots planned but when i went there the sun was high up and i saw a bench getting reflected onto the glass of the god's room and i choreographed the shot on the spot so it became a 3.5 minute long like a long take but that was not planned it was very instinctive uh, on the go and the characters of course i think they were not very sure what they were doing <laughs> especially for that scene uh, they got to know it when we were being dubbing the scene what do you most want to get out of this experience at can what are you hoping to leave here with well uh, you know so being at can is like it's like a dream to be very frank and uh, so we are living it and so we want to have this experience a we want to you know uh, represent you know our style and our sense of filmmaking here communicate with you know people uh, mostly maybe from different part of the the globe and second is as we are preparing you know for our next venture maybe you know this exchanges will enrich us yeah. when we are you know <coughs> trying to make a story uh, uh, when we are trying to tell a longer story for a feature film i think exchanges like this will definitely enrich our you know writing and our approach to uh, you know film making wonderful yeah it is same i mean to be very honest i uh, as he could very articulate clearly i when i was selected i was very happy i was surprised too now i am trying to understand it's soaking in slowly but yes of course for the feature film we want to uh, we are already talking to many other filmmakers of our section and uh, we are we will be attending some you know programs of pitch sessions so i think that would help us to understand uh, how to approach a feature uh, for an international audience like that and if there's one artist you know who all are here if yeah. there's one person you could meet who would that be nuri bulge jalan perfect yeah easy <laughs> perfect thank you so much thank and you have so a great much. festival thank you thank you so much You've been watching FC at Can 2023 in association with travel partner Air France, smartphone partner Google Pixel, beauty partner L'Oréal Paris, media partner NDTV and travel trend partner Skybags.